The internet is possibly one of the greatest inventions of mankind. You only need to take a moment to consider how much it's actually affected and transformed our societies from the industries that's disrupted and also how it has enriched and really penetrated every aspect of our lives in modern society. And then you realize how great it is. And what is also quite incredible is how universal it seems. It is seemingly accessible by everyone on earth. All you need really is a phone and a connection and then you can now be in the world of the internet. In fact, a study done by the World Economic Forum actually posits that there are more people who have access to the internet than they do to housing, which as remarkable as it is, it's also quite sad as well. But there's something very democratic about it, this idea that all of us could use it, which really makes you wonder whether the internet is actually free. Because on the surface you might think it is free, you don't have to pay to use the internet, you could just use the internet any moment and most of these services on the internet are free. Yet, there actually is payment involved. There is a transaction that we're not aware of, at least not many of us are aware of, that is happening just by our very usage of the internet. And there is a currency that's being paid. And that currency is actually you and me. That's us. It's our data. Now, at this point, I was expecting some sort of a drum roll and great surprise and gasp in the room. But many of you probably would say that that isn't really new. We know that the internet is collecting our data, but it's really the extent of how it's collected. We spend more than half of our waking hours online on the internet. Every single moment that we're actually online, every single second, we are being monitored. Data is actually being collected from us through our own submission or just through tracking. And we are being surveyed every single second. And so it's really quite pervasive in terms of its extent. And we're not fully aware that this is happening. For example, some sites even track your location and you're not aware that it's tracking your location. Others are actually collecting other forms of data that you might not be aware at all. But the most alarming thing is really in terms of the reaction of most people. When you tell them about this, they would say, oh, naturally that's happening. And this is really the thing that has been a normative shift in terms of really privacy, where privacy today is very much dying. Privacy is no longer a social norm. It seems to be that we have accepted that privacy is gone. Again, many people listening to this video, maybe even you, you might think, that isn't a bad thing. I have nothing to hide. There's nothing wrong with privacy. And this is the world today. You know, it isn't really a big deal. But that's exactly the issue. This normative shift that has happened has happened without our knowledge and really our consideration. There is an importance of privacy and the reason why privacy was safeguarded for such a long time. And today I want to talk about three things really. Firstly, it's this idea that privacy is very much tied to our individuality. In other words, privacy is very much human. This professor, Julie Cohen, she has been studying privacy for a very long time. And she coined this term of subjectivity, which is really this idea that all of us being human, we need to have our own private spaces, our own private worlds, so that we are able to really explore all the edges and limits of our individuality. We have to have our private worlds and spheres in order to do certain things that we want to do that we might be afraid others might be watching, certain things we want to experiment and consider. This is really very important in our own subjective development, this subjectivity. So privacy is very much tied to the subjectivity. And this is really what's at stake because with a world that is now increasingly getting connected to the internet and this feeling that constantly everything is being monitored or tracked, we start to lose this privacy. In fact, as I'm doing this video, my phone on the table could very much be listening to what I'm saying now. I'm sure I'll be getting some ads later about this, but that is exactly the issue. On this subconscious level, we know at least that we're being monitored all the time and we're losing these private worlds. In other words, our subjectivity. And that really leads to loss of individuality and maybe really a rise of conformity, which is very alarming. The impact of the loss of privacy in development of individuality has also been recorded by other sociologists and psychologists besides Julie Cohen. And the overall growing sense of being monitored and being surveyed really does have a strong psychological impact on this. For example, another philosopher looked at this exact issue but from a different angle. The great philosopher Jeremy Bentham, he actually wanted to design a prison that would make prisoners change their behavior, that would stop their ruckus and actually make them more tame. And how he decided to do this was he designed a very interesting prison that was really a circular structure where all the cells were in a circle and at the very center of the prison there was a watchtower with where the guards could actually monitor every single room. Every single cell faced this watchtower in the very center and 
all the cells, they could see this watchtower, but they couldn't see inside the watchtower because the windows were shuttered. But the watchtower could see every single room with no obstructions. And the idea was really to create this sense that at any moment you could possibly be watched and you have no idea, but you know that there's monitoring and this possibility. And this macabre sounding prison was called the Panopticon and was actually built. And according to records. It actually did diminish the clashes and the conflicts and the riots in the prison. At the same time, many of the prisoners actually said they felt it was incredibly oppressive, that at any moment they were being watched. So they had to be very mindful of their behavior. It was incredibly oppressive. And it came to the point where that doesn't even need to be a guard in the watchtower. It's really this idea that you're being watched. It has a psychological sort of impact. And the point there really is this idea that if every day we feel like we're being watched, what sort of impacts would that have on our psychology? Which is also another question that's posed, again related to this question of subjectivity that Cohen talks about. This is part of the everyday transaction that is happening with really the internet and now really an unavoidable one with the growth of the internet and this is what's at stake. The second issue as well is also the idea of what is actually being done about the data. Most of us, we're led to believe in a very oversimplified assumption that data is being collected to improve our commercial experience that allows us to really be better consumers and get exactly what we want. But that's not actually true because in practice, data is actually being collected from you so these companies can better advertise and market products to you. In other words, we are actually part of an ideological and psychological warfare of a commercial nature where companies are trying to understand you much better to build these really meticulous personality profiles so that they can actually sell products to you and influence you in a much more effective way. Why this is an issue is because economics assume that markets are balanced, that us consumers and businesses, we are balanced. We consumers have the power to decide which businesses to buy from, which products to buy, which services to buy. We're very much rational and informed, but this actually challenges that balance of power and moves it towards towards really the businesses because as they are able to understand us much better without really our awareness, they can build much better profiles of us and find out even better ways to influence us, to convince us to choose them. And that really distorts that balance of power in the context of the market. And this is very much part of that psychological warfare that I'm talking about. It challenges consumer power really. And finally, many of these businesses that have procured this data from us, they have also shown time and time again in recent history that they are not really able to safeguard the data really well because there have been many instances of data leaks and breaches where our data has actually fallen into the hands of others. And it is an issue when it's being used for more nefarious reason, for example, for criminal nature, political nature. But why this is an issue is because this currency that is being procured from us is in essence me and you. It is our most personal and private information. It is essentially us. And these companies that have extracted all this really crucial data about us, they have not been able to really safeguard it well. And at the same time, they are not incentivized to safeguard it well. And oftentimes they're actually incentivized not to safeguard it, but even to sell it on or provide it to others. And all that is actually beyond our control. It's as if we consider this currency of ours as being stored not in a bank, but really by these companies that have not shown really the competency to handle the data. So altogether, what I'm saying is is that today as we're using the internet, there really is a normative shift that's happening. We are paying the currency of our data. In other words, we're leading to a normative shift away from privacy. But all of this is happening largely without our knowledge. A lot of us that are using the internet and many of these services and these operators, we don't even read through the terms and conditions and we're already using. We don't even know what we're really giving up. It isn't exactly a transparent conversation. We also don't know what's being done about our data and how it's being handled. And that really brings me to this. I'm not trying to say that we should unplug the internet and live in the stone age and live in a cave. But I'm saying as this normative shift is happening, as seemingly privacy is being taken away from us, we should be more informed and also we should be part of the conversation and be able to dictate the terms because this currency is truly the most important currency. And what I'm calling for is that there should be more regulations, especially when it comes to these companies, these businesses, in terms of how they procure our data, what they do with our data, and also how they safeguard it, how they actually store it. These are very important things. And these are conversations that we should be happening because this really is the most important transaction that is happening every day. And as the internet is growing all 
all-encompassing in every aspect of our life with the Internet of Things. This is the most crucial thing. The world is changing. There has always been paradigm shifts that comes with technology, but we should very much be informed of it and we should very much be in control of it and play an active role in shaping the future that we want to see.